Now, adjust the volume control so that the sound can be heard in all parts of the room. This is the Protect Your Assets Podcast. You get the idea? It's on the internet. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Go on. Give him two lips. It's like no cheese I've ever tasted. Tell him that it's lost Here's the Sandman. Over Sandman. Today, I'm going to share with you a couple secrets about Social Security. In addition to that, I'm going to give away a chapter in my book that outlines what you need to know to get started. I am David Hollander. I am your host. This is Protect Your Assets Radio. And for those of you just joining us for the first time, welcome. You hear the jingle people around here. They call me the Sandman. And that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night by answering their most troubled tax, legal, and financial questions each week. And that's because I run a tax, financial, and legal firm for over 30 years. Now, Friday was Veterans Day, and it's a day that we honor all those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us and our way of life. Typically, these deaths occurred on foreign soil. I imagine these soldiers as old and wise, resembling the founding fathers, aged with gray hair. But the truth of the matter is most of those who died were young men. We must remember that they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived as a husband, father, or grandfather. They gave up everything for our country, everything for us. And all we do is remember Well, right now, during this time, it's time that we try to prevent wars. Every American who gave his or her life for our country was in one way or another a victim of a diplomacy that failed. And I think we all know that if diplomacy is not backed by real, incredible threats of force, it can be empty, even dangerous. But if we don't use diplomacy first, then our military will become our only line of defense And are we going that way today? There are terrorists out there who want to kill us for our way of life. We must make sure that nuclear weapons don't fall in their hands, and it costs money to support the peacemakers. So I encourage you, as we think about our veterans, write a letter today to your Congress people and let them know how you feel. Because remember, freedom is not free, and the costliest peace is far cheaper than the cheapest war. I was just talking about Social Security because just the other day I was doing a webinar and one of my guests, his name was Eric, started asking me all kinds of questions about how he should take his Social Security. If you think about it, every time you receive a paycheck while you were working, you paid into Social Security. But what do you really know about it? I know if you're just like Eric, you get your statement. From the government and you have three options to receive social security right wrong if you're a 65 year old married couple did you know that there are potentially get this 1379 different ways to collect your benefit you heard me 1379 so here's the bottom line if you give me the next 45 minutes you too can develop a strategy as to how and when you'll take your social security benefits so stick around for the entire show as I'll walk you through what you need to know before you make that social security decision now let's get started a little bit of a sleepy week on Wall Street US consumers long-term inflation expectations increased to the highest level we've seen since, get this, 2011. And concerns were mounting and are mounting about high borrowing costs and the overall economic outlook as we start to round out the year. The Dow was up 0.7% for the week. S&P, a little over 1%. NASDAQ up 2.4%. Ten-year Treasury settling at 461. Oil had a pretty tough week, down 4.1%, closing at $77.23 a barrel. And what drove all this was, it's looking like as we're going into holiday season, there are some questions about the consumer. Remember, the consumer helps drive our economy 
And we've certainly seen a robust pace, but things look like they're slowing down. Well, why do I say that? Well, we look at savings rates. And as you know, households were pretty flush with stimulus cash after the pandemic and all those trillions of dollars that were printed and sent out. There were about $2.1 trillion in excess savings in 2021. However, much of that money is gone. And it's been spent on goods and services over the past two years. And right now, households are saving about 3.4%, which is about half the average pre-pandemic. Credit card balances have increased and delinquencies are ticking up as personal savings rates decline. We have seen consumers increase their overall credit card debt. The total credit card debt, get this in the U.S. right now, has risen to over a trillion dollars. That's the highest on record. Consider back in 2008, it was under $900 billion. So as household credit card balances rise, of course, delinquency rates on credit cards in areas like auto loans will also go higher. And while these have not yet risen to be in line with prior recessions, the trend, it's concerning because households are going to have less to spend in the months ahead, which means lower consumption. And third, bank are still tight. If you want to get a loan, last week the Fed's quarterly senior loans survey showed that banks are still making it tough on consumers and businesses to borrow money. And the standards for getting a loan as well as, uh, you know, any sort of financing for a small or mid-sized business, it's gotten pretty tough. And so banks are cranking down on us as well. And we've wrapped up the third quarter earnings season, which overall had some light on where things are going as corporations were talk- talking to us about what was coming. And so as we looked at that, we started seeing some patterns develop. So as I was looking at some of the higher dollar items, uh, we had people uh, reporting like a line tech, you know, the Invisaligns, those plastic retainers you wear instead of getting braces. The company's called Align Tech, Harley Davidson, Keurig, Louis Vuitton, Whirlpool, Electrolux, all these folks make higher end consumer goods. And the point is, if uh, higher inflation's around, higher interest rates, consumers starting to slow down. Well, the first thing they stop spending money on are these higher dollar items. And of course, all those companies were telling us that when it comes to expensive discretionary items, They're seeing some impact, and they're warning us about what's coming. So if you're in that sector, RTH is an ETF, you may want to uh, look at downsizing on some of that. The other thing that was talking about was travel. So Hilton, a lot of the airlines were reporting third quarter, and they were talking about bottom line that while travel is not collapsing by any means, consumers aren't spending on things like that. So we're seeing softening there. And so what it means overall for the market and for how you position yourself is that uh, you need to look at the volatility. So if you have a portfolio with a higher beta in it, more equity, that's more volatile, you might want to consider lowering on that, especially as we go into the next couple of months. Because I think that this fourth quarter or early first quarter of next year, I think that's when we're going to see some sort of a pullback, some sort of a recessionary look and things should start to slow down. And that means more volatility. And so if you're concerned with that, you might want to look at some low volatility ETFs that could protect you on that. So where are the markers right now? Well, as you heard at the opening here, the S&P closed at 44.15. So next resistance level on the upside would be 44.35, only 20 points away. Doesn't seem like a lot, but we'll see. I don't don't know. The support, the sell-off, 43.18. And then 4238 thereafter. So we'll see where things go. Did you see the recent update from the Social Security Administration? Well, they, po- they posted it right on their website. Find out what it is, what's coming in January, and what you need to know if you care about Social Security. You're listening to the Protect Your Assets show with David Hollander. That's me. I am the Sandman, and we will be right back. Take 
take the first step toward reaching your financial goals and get the information that can help you live a confident retirement. That first step is going to PYAEvents.com and signing up for our next free event. That's PYAEvents.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I'm David Hollander, also known as Sandman, and you're listening to the Protect Your Assets show this morning. All right, well, let's get into uh, Social Security basics, because these sort of fundamentals, if you don't know them, you're uh, going to have some problems. And so this comes right out of my book, Chapter 6, and we talk about Social Security and how complex it can be. It's not simple. Some people presume that Social Security benefits are only earned after a set number of working a certain amount of years. That's not true. Others assume it guarantees a certain percentage of their average income over their working years. Did you know that the more you make, particularly if you live here in the Bay Area, it's doubtful that there's going to be much to pay your monthly bills once you retire? Social Security just, as you make more, it pays you less. A lot of people also question, well, will it be around? Because, uh, you know, they're just cynical about the government. Well, let's clarify some of the common areas of confusion. First, you should understand who's eligible for Social Security. The program works on an all or nothing basis. In order to qualify for Social Security, first, you have to have at least 40 credits. Do you know how many credits you have? These credits are earned through employment when you earn taxable income that's subject to Social Security tax. So if you're not sure, go take a look. Right now, this is the rule for 2023. You must have $1,640 per credit of quarterly income to qualify, meaning that there's four quarters in a year. You will have had to earn $1,640 each quarter or more to qualify for one credit. And so for the full year, right now that's 6560 to get the maximum four credits for 2023. Now you need 40 of those. And so most people who regularly work over say 10 years gain the 40 credits, but then some don't. Some people take time off, some people are get laid off, maybe don't work that full year. So if you're not sure about that, go check that out. Also, if you're unemployed for several years, you will not lose credits that you've previously earned, but you won't make any either. Because once you do earn those, you retain those credits and you can add them up over time. However, if you fail to attain the necessary 40 credits, you just don't get Social Security. And we've had cases like that. We literally have had folks who thought they had enough credits we go do a check, and it turns out they have 37 or 38. They don't have enough, which means, sorry, you get nothing. Second, Social Security retirement income only provides you with a portion, a percentage of the income that you had during retirement. This percent is referred to as your replacement ratio. And that replacement ratio varies depending on levels of earned income. Now, here's the unfortunate part. As you earn more money, the portion that's replaced by Social Security decreases, goes down. And right now, let's look at some of those numbers. For those with what's called low career earnings, which would be an average of $15,000 per year, your replacement ratio right now is 75.3%. So that's pretty high. Those who earn $60,000 would receive a replacement ratio of 40.7%. And those with, say, the maximum average earnings of 147, 148, we'll round it up, per year or more, well, your ratio is 26.7%. So look at the difference. That the high end is 753 At the low end, it's 26.7%. And the person who's getting the 26.7% probably has a higher standard of living, which means that when you retire, you're going to have to figure out where you're going to get that extra money to make up that difference to pay for your Social Security and your monthly living expenses. One of the most common 
uh, concerns that I hear pretty much regularly is, well, I'm just going to take it because I've earned it and I deserve it and I want it and I'm not so sure the government's going to be around. Heck, they can't even agree on a budget. This next week, we're going to have them talk about that. We'll see what happens. If they can't even agree on a budget, they can't even agree on really anything these days. What's to say it's not going to run out? So I'm going to encourage you to do this. You need to go check out right now the Social Security website, ssa.gov. And on there, there is a discussion by Chief Actuary Steve Goss. And Steve Goss is talking about that question. And you can listen to him. Uh, This was just recorded about a month ago. And he talks about the viability of Social Security and how it's going to pay out. Now, I took away from that that if you're alive right now and you're paying into Social Security, given the fact that Congress can do a number of things, they can raise taxes. They can certainly lower the amount that they pay out. Um, All these sorts of things are options that are out there. And it's likely, again, according to this, that Social Security will be there and will have some pretty good percentage of revenue from taxation, not just the funds. So when you hear people talking about, oh, the fund's going to run out in 10 years or so, and so that means it's over. And Well, no, it doesn't. So go check out this um, podcast, and once you do that, you'll have an understanding that the system is pretty sound overall and that you should count on some percentage of that for your overall income. Now, I know this is complicated, and you're trying to figure out how much they're going to pay you. Look, you've paid a lot of money into this system since you started working. Remember that SDI that's on there? Well, that's where this goes. So you've paid quite a bit into it, and you deserve to get some of your money back. So what I encourage you to do is get chapter six of my book, and I'm going to go ahead and give that out right now for anybody who calls this number, 866-PROTECT. We are here right now answering the phone. You can talk to my team. We'll send you a copy of chapter six, the social security decisions you need to know right now to help you start to figure this out. Again, 866-776-8328. 866-PROTECT to get your Social Security Guide. Now, coming up next, it's time for our popular They Say segment, where they say you don't pay tax on your Social Security income in retirement. Is that true? Find out when I come back. You're listening to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander. That's me. We'll be right back. Take the first step toward reaching your financial goals and get the information that can help you live a confident retirement. That first step is going to PYAEvents.com and signing up for our next free event. That's PYAEvents.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and you are listening to Protect Your Assets this morning. And uh, if you're trying to save taxes this year, let's face it, taxes are going up. It's getting more expensive to do anything anymore. (laughs) Now it's time for one of our fan favorite parts of the show, our They Say segment, where we debunk common myths, half-truths, and sometimes just bad advice that they say. Who are they? What do they know that I don't? And what are they saying this week? Here's David Hollander, the Sandman's answer. Okay, so here's one they say all the time. You don't have to pay taxes on your Social Security income because that would be double taxation. After all, you paid into the Social Security DI system. Remember SSDI on your paycheck while you were working? So why should you have to pay taxes on that income when you start to take it out? Good question. Well, did you see the 60 Minutes a couple weeks back regarding Social Security? Well, basically, it was about a few different couples who had received checks from Social Security, just normally, like they normally would get these checks from Social Security. And Social Security made a mistake. Turned out they were paying them more than they should. 
And these folks ended up owing tens of thousands of dollars back to Social Security without any real clear way on a, how to fix that process or to pay them back because they had been living on that money and spent it. It was gone. So they were really worried about having to sell their house. So Social Security is complex. It's difficult. It's tough to navigate. Got to pay taxes on that income. It's confusing when you start to try and figure that out. So this morning we're doing sort of a basic workshop on Social Security. Now, I know you've worked all those years. You've paid all those taxes each and every month into the system. And so you would naturally assume that income received once you retire and start collecting your Social Security should be exempt from any tax. Well, unfortunately, this could not be the case because in many situations, individuals and couples that we work with must pay taxes on the income from Social Security as they start to receive it. So understanding how other sources of income that are going to come to you in retirement, how those affect your benefits, and there's some strategies that you can use, hopefully will minimize the taxes that you pay on this income that is something that's rightfully yours. So the determination of Social Security income tax is based on your combined adjusted gross income. And this figure is a combination of your non-taxable interest. So that would be municipal bond interest, for instance. Uh, so your Social Security benefit uh, goes into that as well. Any sort of pension that you could include. Uh, any sort of rental income from real estate. What about part-time? I get this all the time. People, they, you know, they retire at 65, they start doing a part-time job because they're good at what they do and they pay for consulting, for whatever. Well, that's income and that's going to add up and that's going to hit you. And as you start to draw down on your 401k or your IRAs, you sell stocks and make some gains on those. Maybe the mutual funds or ETFs you invest in right about now, you're going to see in about a few weeks, you're going to start distributing Income, well, you can't control that. And guess what? As you add all of that up, your Social Security will most likely be subject to some kind of taxation. So what do you need to know? What are the numbers going into this next tax time? Well, here's how this works. If you're an individual and you add all those things up I just talked about, and if you don't, if you need a list, I'm going to give you an opportunity in a minute to get the list. But anyway, if you miss what I said, but if you have 25,000 or less and you're an individual of that kind of income, then don't worry about it. There's no social security tax. But if you're an individual and you have say between 25,000 and 34,000, it's not a lot, right? It's $9,000 more. 50% of your social security benefit is going to show up on your 1040 as taxable. And if you make more than $34,000 in all those sources, get this, as much of 85% of your social security income may be taxed. Yeah. Now for married couples, if you're under $32,000 of gross income, and if you live in the bear, I don't know how you do that. But anyways, if that's the case, then don't worry about it. But if you're between 32,000 and 44,000, then uh, you could be between 50% and up to 85% if you're over 44000 of your Social Security income could be taxed. Now, as evident from these figures, 50% and 85%, those are alarming. And so you can see a significant proportion of your Social Security benefit may be taxed if your annual income exceeds the parameters that the government establishes here. So the formula that we're talking about fails to address several aspects of the tax determination you need to think about as you look at this. And so I usually recommend that you get with an expert who does social security. And that's why we have CPAs on our staff here at the Liberty Group. We do your tax return and we show you how you can pay less on this because once you start to look at the floor of these amounts and the maximum amounts, you want to look at the income. What kind of income is coming in? Because there are types of loans or other income you can receive from your investments 
that don't generate a 1099. And if you can establish those sorts of income, well, then maybe it makes sense to start taking the Social Security. It's estimated by, get this, the Social Security Administration that 56% of Social Security recipients right now owe income taxes on their Social Security benefits. 56%. So depending on the length of time over which Social Security benefits are taken, the difference between paying taxes on that income and avoiding it altogether could be significant. First of all, you have to pick up the phone and call us, 866-PROTECT. Pick up the phone right now, pull over, dial this number, 866-776-8328. Now, when you talk to my team, because we're here right now, Here's what we'll do. We'll take down your name and number, and then we're going to send over to you chapter six of my book, which deals with the fundamentals of Social Security. These things you must know. We just updated this, by the way, with new numbers. So if you want to find out what it's going to look like and what you can do now to pay less taxes in 2023, or to get more of your Social Security and get help with that, because remember, married couple, 1,376 different ways to do it. Get some help. This is what we do. 866-PROTECT to get more. 866-PROTECT. Now, when we come back, we've got more to share with you. In fact, this one alone is worth the entire show. So hang in there. We'll be right back. You are listening to The Sandman on the Protect Your Assets Radio Network. If you missed any of Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, all you have to do is go to PYARadio.com where you can download or listen to our latest shows for free. Just go to PYARadio.com on your computer or mobile device when it's most convenient for you. That's PYARadio.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And this morning you are listening to Protect Your Assets. And isn't that name, Protect Your Assets, so relevant right now when things are just costing so much more to get anything done and hoping someone shows up to do their work? Today's show has been just for you as we've gone over some basics about how you qualify for Social Security, how your Social Security is taxed, determining how your best way to take Social Security is a complicated and depends on a lot of variables. So let's look at some guidance in your situation to figure out what might be the best for you. So factors that you need to consider are other retirement income sources, of course, your income tax rate, your age, your anticipated longevity, all these play a role in developing your particular social security strategy. And with that, one of the first steps in approaching a Social Security strategy involves determining your what's called full retirement age. You're going to write that down, the FRA. It's super important. Your FRA represents the age at which you can receive your primary insurance amount. Again, I'm sorry for all these terms, but write it down. PIA, the primary insurance amount from Social Security. And this is age based. And it goes back to your date of birth. It's not the same for everybody. And these FRA dates change over time. For example, for someone born in 1938, their FRA is 65 years and two months. For someone born between 1943 and 1954, your FRA is 66 years old. Now, currently, FRA increases incrementally to the age of 67 years for those who were born 1960 or later. You get access to this information from the Social Security Administration website, ssa.gov. And the reason it's so important to know your FRA 
stems from the fact that claiming your Social Security benefit prior to your FRA, which is possible, will result in a reduced or penalty level of benefits that you receive. So while it's true to delay your Social Security helps, taking it early could be a bad mistake, particularly if you have other sorts of income coming in. Now, if you delay claiming your benefit past your FRA, your benefit will increase 8% per year for every year that you delay past your FRA. Now, that could be pretty attractive. You're getting 8% that's backed by the federal government. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Because you can't get that right now. So let's look at a situation. A person who was born in 1950 has an FRA of 66 years. And at that age, let's assume she would receive a full retirement benefit from Social Security of $2,000 a month. Now, I'm going to leave COLAs out of this for the sake of explanation. And so if she chooses to begin receiving benefits at age 62, then this amount of 2000 as the FRA would be reduced. Likewise, if she chooses to receive benefits starting at age 64, the monthly amount would still be less than the $2,000 a month or the full retirement age. At 66 years of age, she would receive her full retirement benefit and so when we compare these three scenarios, by the time she reaches the age of 70, there could be a significant, significant difference in the amount that she received overall from Social Security. Like what? Well, at 70 years of age, the total amount received would be $96,000. If she had waited until age 66, $124,776. And if she began withdrawals at age 64, $144,000. So by delaying Social Security benefits until her full retirement age, she accumulated $48,000 less than she would have if she chose the 62 option. So you can see that's sort of the reverse of maybe what you've heard but it really does depend on the person's longevity in this case. And if they're married, you're going to have to add all those facts into the situation as well. But what if she ended up living to be age 80 or 90? Well, in those kind of situations, the differences would be reversed. Some big numbers in some cases, particularly if you multiply it by two people. And you can do that. It's part of the marriage credit we get for being married. Whew. Thank you. <laughs> so part of the question boils down to how long are you going to live? And that's a great question because a lot of people don't know. But you can certainly look at your family history. You can do uh, nowadays you have these great tests. I frequently do these where you measure your, your blood. You look at different things in your blood and your health. And it can tell you, you know, you're biologically a 32-year-old. And there are some really great books out there about exercise, diet, new techniques that are around that can help you live a much longer, healthier life. And those things exist. So due to the number of variables involved in making the strategic determination and just the complicated nature of Social Security policies and laws, I recommend you get some advice from knowledgeable professionals who do Social Security as part of their planning. And in order to formulate the best approach to Social Security retirement income, you should develop a specific plan that weighs the pros and cons of taking Social Security over different periods of your life before you do it. And before you go down there and sign up for it or do it online to start receiving your check, make sure you have a solid understanding of the nuances of the rules and regulations as they come out because they're changing and there's some new changes coming here in January and they're right there on the website. So go check them out. Pick up the phone right now. Call me. 866-776-8328. We'll help you get your statement. We'll look it over for you because there's a couple pages there particularly that I want to see and ask you some questions about it and then we'll help you get it right. 866-PROTECT. 
Call us right now, 866-PROTECT, to find out how to get more from Social Security. Now what I'd like you to do is inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. I feel good. Picture a day in your mind when you don't have to worry about who's going to take care of that client anymore. Picture a day when you're sitting on the deck of a large luxury liner. Your family's with you in the Mediterranean and it's 82 degrees outside and dry. Picture a day when you can relax, travel, and do all the things you've always wanted to do. Well, it all starts with a 15-minute virtual checkup. Call us right now and get yours, 866-PROTECT. Again, I'm giving away Chapter 6 of my book right now, which helps you figure out Social Security, 866-PROTECT. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Protect Your Asses team for putting together a great show today. My executive producer, network manager, Kevin Renfer, and of course, all my fabulous producers back there helping out, Raf, Phil, Lucas, Thanks, guys, because without my team, I'm just another pretty voice on the radio. You've been listening to the Protect Your Asset Show. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. Go out and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Investment advisory services are offered through Liberty Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. The strategies mentioned are not suitable for everyone. The information expressed is not considered your specific situation or objectives and may not be appropriate for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. To better understand the risk associated with investing and how it reacts to different market conditions, listeners should always consult with their qualified investment professionals, financial advisors, legal or tax specialists and conduct their due diligence before making any financial decisions or taking any action. The legal information provided on the air is not intended to substitute for callers hiring their lawyers to advise them about personal legal matters. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Liberty Group LLC paid for the following program and the host's views and opinions do not represent those of the station or its ownership. California Life Agent number 048569. Persons engaging the services of one affiliate of Liberty Group LLC companies should be aware that each company is operated separately. You're listening to the Protect Your Assets Radio Network.